Let's count them down. Who says you can't be a hero and bathe in the blood of your enemies? <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie heroes who kill more than the villains do. For this list, we're looking at movie protagonists who are undeniably the heroes of the story, despite the fact that they might not shy away from spilling buckets of blood. And may exhibit, shall we say, flexible moral codes at times. When it comes to kill counts, we're talking on-screen deaths. Although it should be mentioned that accurate numbers couldn't always be 100% confirmed for all of them. Also note that while you'll probably see a number of anti-heroes, we're drawing the line at main characters that are clearly villains, like Scarface. Say hello to my little friend. Number 10, John Rambo, Rambo. First Blood Part 2. How we live, John. Day by day. Oh, John, what happened? One of the most remarkable aspects of First Blood is the fact that Rambo managed to fight off countless enemies without ever directly killing. They drew First Blood, not me. Sure, he maims and he cripples, but never with lethal intent. Until the sequel, that is. In the clunkily titled First Blood Part 2, it's almost as if he's trying to make up for taking it easy in the first film. <laughs> It's tough to quantify how many people the villains of the film managed to kill, but they can't compete with Rambo. <laughs> Who personally racks up around 60 kills, according to various sources. Mission accomplished. The film has been parodied ad nauseum, but never so well as in Hot Shots Part 2, in which Charlie Sheen's topper Harley kills a ridiculous amount of people. Number 9, Inspector Tequila Yuen, Hard Boiled. Pang said you don't waste slugs. I don't waste them. Nothing says bona fide badass like a man holding a baby in one hand and a shotgun in the other. No, seriously, that's how Inspector Tequila appeared on the theatrical poster. Lessons to take from this Hong Kong action film include never kill the partner of a cop who plays the clarinet and has earned himself the nickname Tequila, never place babies in harm's way unless you want to experience a whole new world of pain, and Chow Yun Fat is the Clint Eastwood of Hong Kong cinema. <laughs> Not just anyone can make cops look cooler than villains. Tequila kills over 75 baddies in this film, which must have incurred a considerable amount of paperwork. Number 8, Brian Mills, The Taken Franchise. I will find you, and I will kill you. Liam Neeson has played some seriously powerful characters over the years. Zeus, the Greek god, Aslan, the Christ-like lion of Narnia, Ra's al Ghul, the leader of the League of Assassins, and Qui-Gon Jinn, Jedi Master. Yet of all the characters he's played, the one responsible for the most pee trickling down the most legs is a guy named Brian. Your mother and I are gonna be taken. His name might conjure up images of the boring accountant living next door, but Brian Mills is a terrifying killing machine. He puts it better than we ever could. What I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. Word to bad guys everywhere. Don't try to kidnap or kill either him or anyone he loves. He will kill a staggering number of people to get to you. I believe it. <laughs> but it's not gonna save you. <laughs> Number seven, Wade Wilson, Deadpool, Deadpool. I only have 12 bullets, so you're gonna have to share. Decked out in red, so no one can see him bleed, and hailing from the depths of insanity. It's the one, the only, Merc with a Mouth, Deadpool. Someone's not counting. Six. The unholy offspring of Rob Liefeld, and a blatant ripoff of Deathstroke, 
Deadpool's kill count is worrisomely high for a superhero. You're about to be killed by a Zamboni! His solo film was the surprise hit of 2016, and proved that though there might not be a lot of originality left in the comic book genre, when done right, an R rating can still bring in the bucks. It's just confusing! Is it sexist to hit you? Is it, is it more sexist to not hit you? I mean, the line gets real... Worry. Sure, Francis, or Ajax, may be a truly detestable villain, but seriously, does he manage to kill anybody in the film? You don't want to kill me. I'm the only one who can fix your ugly mug. Deadpool's quest for vengeance results in an awe-inspiring body count, despite the fact that he repeatedly forgets to bring his ammo bag. Hey! Where's your duffel bag? Number 6. Mr. Smith, shoot him up. Who are you, really, Smith? I'm a British nanny. And I'm dangerous. He might not be number one on the list, but he deserves mention based on the fact that he's the only hero to use a carrot with deadly force. You son of a bitch! <laughs> Eat your vegetables. This movie comes exactly as advertised, and is one of the most trigger happy shoot 'em up films ever made. It's creative, never takes itself too seriously, and isn't afraid to acknowledge that henchmen are nothing more than cannon fodder. And who can forget that sex shootout scene? Oh! Oh! Again, endangering the life of a baby inspires over-the-top violence on the part of the hero. But when a mother is gunned down in cold blood, and you're left to protect the child, it pretty much comes with a license to kill. That ponytail doesn't make you look hip, young, or cool. Number 5. Colonel John Matrix, Commando. Let off some steam, Bennett. We could probably do a list of the top 10 movies where Arnold Schwarzenegger kills more people than the villain does. But for today, we'll have to make do with Commando alone. Besides, no one brings the pain quite like John Matrix in this action flick, in which he kills between 80 and 100 people, depending on who you ask. But hey, if we learned anything from Brian in the first Taken film, it's that you do not kidnap the daughter of a trained killer. Jenny! Daddy? Commando sees Arnie killing his foes with reckless abandon, using a number of absurdly powerful weapons, like an M202A1 flash rocket launcher. He kills literally every man at the villain's mansion, and he does it with such ruthless efficiency that we're willing to bet a few servants or gardeners died in the crossfire. Leave anything for us? Just bodies. Number 4. John McClane, Die Hard. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. All John ever wants to do is get together with his family over the holidays. But time and time again, it's up to him to stop some terrorist plot that he stumbled into. He's a reluctant hero, but a hero nonetheless. Sure, he consistently kills way more people than the terrorist he's up against does, but that's just his style. He manages to kill all the bad guys before they can carry out their dastardly plans. Where are my detonators? Where are they, or shall I shoot another one? Sooner or later, I might get to someone you do care about. Go f yourself, Hans. That doesn't make him a killer. It makes him smart and extremely effective. With his many witticisms, he's always a step ahead of the villain. You can call his style overkill. We just call it a preemptive strike. Happy trails, Hans. Number three, Rama, The Raid, Redemption. No. This movie blew audiences away with some of the best action sequences seen in years. Many critics actually claim that it revitalized the action genre. As Special Tactics Officer Rama makes his way through an apartment block controlled by a crime lord, he faces off against an endless slew of knife-wielding, deadly assailants. The fight choreography is stunning, and given the film's setting, Rama's body count climbs quickly. Considering only 20 cops enter the building, and every resident appears to be trained in the Indonesian martial art Penchak Silat, the villain, Tama Riyadi, couldn't kill as many people as the hero even if he tried. Selamat bekerja. Dan jangan lupa bersenang -senang. The sequel, another great film, keeps the body count equally high. <laughs> Number 2. The Bride, Beatrix Kiddo, K. 
Kill Bill. I've killed a hell of a lot of people to get to this point. But I have only one more. Hell hath no fury like a bride when you ruin her wedding, kill her fiancé, and leave her for dead. It's always bad form to crash a wedding, especially in such unceremonious fashion. And if that bride's a trained assassin, better make sure she's dead, Bill. You and I have unfinished business. The bride awakens from her coma and gets to work on the only thing she thinks she has left, revenge. Wiggle your big toe. Everyone's a killer in this story, but no one does it better than Beatrix, who takes out between 60 and 80 people over the two films. <laughs> Director Quentin Tarantino has always written his heroes with a penchant for bloodletting, though, a habit Django Unchained only further reinforced. The Django! You black son of a bitch! The D is silent here, baby. <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number one, John Wick, John Wick. Hello, Francis. Aside from perhaps Leon the Professional, it's very hard for a film to make an audience see a hitman as an acceptable hero. But John Wick accomplishes that task with ease. It also proved that Keanu Reeves still has what it takes to be an action hero, and that the theft of a vintage muscle car and the murder of a puppy are both acceptable reasons for vengeance. A few days after his wife died, you steal his car and kill his fucking dog. Although technically retired, John Wick hasn't lost the touch when it comes to killing thugs and baddies. He may be reluctant to pick up his gun again, but about 77 kills later, he remains a likable and even relatable hero. You uh, working again? No, I'm just sorting some stuff out. Do you agree with our list? Violence is one of the most fun things to watch. Who's your favorite hero to rack up a higher body count than the villain? For more heart-stopping top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.